Well, hello everybody. We're going to talk about Windows again, and we're going to talk about a topic. About the topic that we're going to talk about a topic that we've talked about before, but we're going to talk about it in depth a little bit more. The rap artists still do that. I don't know. I don't listen to rap. I listen to uh, banjos. All right, so frequently when I make a video and recommend who keys or recommend OEM keys, I get a comment that says, you know, this is illegal, right? So I'm going to delve into that a little bit more. But now that I'm also talking about LTSC keys, I want to specifically address the LTSC legality. Um, and we're going to talk about terms of service agreements and whatnot. We're going to talk about different places in the world. We're going to talk about a lot of, you know, how this works and everything. Um, and it's mostly just for the few people out there who either think that it's illegal or they want to know what the terms of service says uh, so they can like navigate around that and their own ability to sleep at night. I have no problem sleeping at night because I don't care about mega corporations, but I know some people out there do really care about the terms of service. So I'll, I'll lay all that out there just so you know what it says. And then I'll recommend my OEM keys and all that stuff because sponsored, you know, whatever. But the whole part about the legality, they didn't come up with this topic. I came up with it on my own so we can all talk about it because I've been using OEM keys since the Windows XP days. Before we get into all that, let's uh, talk about what we're all going to do. It's coming up the end of Windows 10. What are you doing? I'll tell you what I'm doing. I'm going to stay on Windows 10 and I'm just going to pay for the extra security updates because I cannot be bothered on my main rig to like redo everything at this point. But for all my other PCs that are not getting Linux, most of them are getting Linux, but for all my other ones that are getting Windows, they're getting that bloat free, AI free LTSC. This is Windows 10 LTSC over here on whokeys.com where I grab my OEM keys and these are volume license keys, not OEM. But then we also have Windows 11. This is the Enterprise LTSC IoT edition, which will work until, well, 10 will work until 2032. I'm not sure about 11, it'll work a long time. Then we also have just regular Windows 11 Pro, Windows 11 Home. There's Windows 10 Pro. I don't know why anybody would be buying that right now. And then we also have Office 2016, Office 2019 as well. And that's just if you want to get like an offline version of Office and not have to pay all those monthly fees all the time. So you can just grab it here and you're done. Just don't sign into it because then a Microsoft will install their AI that watches it's no, no. Yeah, I really hate how Microsoft has multiple different prices for their stuff, depending on who you are and where you live. So that's why I always grab these OEM keys. I mean, look at the price if you go to the retail store and the functionality of the product is identical other than the fact that you don't get support from Microsoft. You have to do your own tech support. And then if you um, change out your hardware, you may have to change your key because it's an OEM key. It's tied to the hardware, but you'd have to buy this key many times to equal the price of one of those retail keys. So as far as the prices go, well, right now they've got this 20% off discount for back to school, but we've got a better discount. TS25 will give you 25% off. Proceed to checkout and then put in coupon code TS25. There we go. And check that out. We're saving 887. All right, I should put in my card info. There we go. Click on view keys and codes. Once you get to the user center, click on get the key. You'll see your key right here in the middle. Go ahead and highlight that, copy that, press start, and then type activate. You'll see activation settings. Go ahead and click on that. And then right here, it says not active. Just click on change product key. Place in our product key and then click on activate. Hey, look at that, active. So thanks to WhoKeys for sponsoring. Don't forget TS25 to get your 25% off. And now let's go ahead and, and talk this through, shall we? Let's talk about LTSC for just a second. So I said I'm moving over to LTSC. Where do you get a copy of that? All the way in the bottom of the description. So you can grab the ISO here and then and there it is, just grab that ISO. And then you can use Rufus to make a bootable USB. All right, so once Rufus is installed, there's that uh, ISO I downloaded. Now you're going to want to, just for security purposes, you're going to want to hit the little check mark button right here. This checks the checksum. Now what a checksum is, is it's a, a hash that's generated and it's based upon all the data that's on the disk. Microsoft doesn't actually publish these, but a lot of people have been posting them online. So whenever I see one that's corroborated across multiple different places, uh, and I don't see anyone in the comments being like, this is not the correct checksum, I'm more likely to check it. So there's our checksum. I've put the checksum in the description of the videos. So as long as your checksum is the same as this, that means they haven't swapped the file and it's a legit copy. If you're very worried, I'll do another video on this very soon, but what you can do is you can mount this. And once you get this mounted, there are several files in here that you can check to see who signed them. Right click on setup, click on properties and click on digital signatures. 
and make sure this is signed by the Microsoft Corporation right there. And you can check on several different things. I'm going to make a video talking about all this soon, but I just wanted to let you know for security purposes, that's how I did it. Uh, of course, not at fault if you burn down the, your computer while installing this. Anyway, I don't have all the information about this, like where it came from, but apparently there was a repeat software pirate and they were selling keys and getting keys, but they didn't say where it all came from. They pointed a finger at China, um, but there was obviously something weird going on here and there was a lawsuit. And that was just for someone who was reselling stuff. It's not for someone who was installing it. So yeah, the people who do sell these things can possibly get in trouble, but people who buy them cannot. It's kind of like the thing where in your uh, do, doing torrents, if you're seeding, well, that's a lot more dangerous than downloading. So it's kind of like the same principle, but yeah, that's one time that was in 2016. So this is a little bit different. Microsoft sued a few different websites and I'll link this article so you can take a look at it, but I'll summarize it here so we don't go too long. What essentially those websites were doing is they were selling activations, activation tokens. This stuff is shady, could be hacked. They're not selling, you know, OEM keys. They weren't obtaining the regular OEM keys. They were just giving people cracks essentially and they were selling this stuff. So that's, I mean, Microsoft's got to put a stop to that. That's dangerous because they could also bundle malware. Who knows what they could do with all these cracks. So that's, that was a specific case. But otherwise, it seems like Microsoft doesn't even care. Um, and if you look at the bottom line, they make more money on all the services that are built into Windows than they do with Windows itself. And I'm talking like OneDrive and the, the backup and just whatever other services that are built into Windows. Now they've got all the monitoring stuff that we can turn off, obviously, if you know what you're doing. But there's a lot of like monitoring stuff. So they're collecting a lot of data on you, which they can also monetize. So they want you on Windows. I'm not sure why they still charge a premium for it, especially now that we have Windows 10, which feels more like a freemium product, even though they're making you pay for it because of all the nonsense and all the bloat that they have just kind of shoved into this operating system, which is why I always recommend LTSC. And that brings me to the legality of LTSC. And this one's a little bit different because LTSC does not have OEM keys. And this is something I wanted to correct from the last video because I kind of talked about it all as if it were all like the same kind of thing. But, you know, LTSC, um, LTSC is something different. So there's no OEM system for LTSC. They don't just have people doing system builds uh, or they don't have social system builders selling LTSC to customers. So there's no OEM. You can't get an OEM key for that. And if you find something online that's selling a key, it's not going to be an OEM key. It's going to be a volume license activation that came from somewhere. You know, it's still a key. It still unlocks it. It still works just fine, but it's different. You're getting it from a company that agreed to have a certain allotment of keys or a huge number of keys or whatever that they're going to use for their company. They either didn't need them all or wanted to make some more money. So they sold those keys and you're getting them from someone like that. Now, Microsoft doesn't like this. They can, in fact, go after companies for this if they wanted to. But if they're available and they're there, in my opinion, it's the same as installing an OEM key effectively from the way it functions on your system. And there's no record of them ever going after any, you know, like end user for any of this kind of stuff. In fact, I don't think there's many records of them going after people for reselling LTSC keys, but you know, that's something that they don't like in their terms of service for sure. LTSC keys come from volume license leaks. So they could come from schools or corporations or whatever. Whenever a corporation gives these keys away or sells these keys, it violates the EULA on they are the ones violating it. So could be deactivated, could be. You know, so far all of mine have been working just fine, but that's an anecdote. Another place where these come from is like MSDN uh, or Visual Studio keys that, you know, they have like a whole bunch of like an allotment that they have that are mostly just supposed to be for testing and they're not supposed to sell those. But sometimes people do. They're like, I'll sell them for seven bucks a pop every day and make 30 bucks a day selling my allotment. Some people do that. Um, others are recycled keys or just, you know, companies that have a bunch of old unused volume keys that they're selling off. So the thing about the recycled keys or the extra keys are just the leftover keys that a company has. And the EU, this is likely legal, even though Microsoft says it's against their terms of service. But in the EU, they can't do that. So it's likely completely legal and not even against the terms of service in the EU to grab a key that's like an extra from a company. 
And that's where this gets really interesting. If you live in the EU, that's like, I wouldn't even worry about it at all, but that's just me. You make any decision that makes you feel comfortable. In my opinion, it's very much worth it to grab an OEM key because of just the price for what you're getting. And the other thing is there's a lot of activation scripts and stuff online. So those, I mean, Microsoft doesn't seem to be cracking down on those either. They're on GitHub, which is interesting, um, you know, that they're not doing anything. I don't trust those for my main rig for a couple different reasons. I don't like, well, it's difficult to say this, but I don't like running scripts like this on my main rig because I don't know what it is. But it's difficult to say that because I also have to find LTSC, um, you know, images online. So it's like at some point you just got to pick the poison to drink and drink it and then just do everything else you can to secure it and do as many scans as you can. So I think a lot of the OEM ISOs that I'm using are totally fine. But at the same time, I'm like not running any of the activation scripts on my main rig. So it, you do you, whatever you want to do. It's, you know, don't yell and scream about it. Just do do your thing. But for me, I think it's kind of ridiculous that Microsoft has all these different things. Let me tell you what the people want, Microsoft. The people want a version of LTSC that is available for purchase at a decent price that makes sense to everybody that we can use. And I know you can't collect all the data on us when we use that and you can't shove the AI down our throats, but it is, I know, I know at a certain point, it's not about taking care of the customers anymore. It's about taking care of the shareholders and the bottom line. But I think a part of that can be taking care of the customers because Linux is viable. And I think a lot of people can and should go over to Linux right now. So if you want people to not go over to the Linux, especially when you get worse and worse when it comes to all the AI and bloat and all that nonsense. If you want people to not go over to Linux, give us a version, call it Enterprise or whatever, call it Enterprise Plus, call it Professional Plus, call it Professional LTSC, I don't care. Give us a version that we can have and maybe we won't have to go and grab, you know, keys that came from corporations or whatever. Maybe we won't. Anyway, that's the end of the video. I know what you think in the comments. I do have some stuff on sale. Let's take a look. It's on the shelf. Let's take a look at what we got on sale over here. So um, this stuff, half price, coupon code Happy Hardware for the next couple of weeks. And then uh, I should do these on sale because I want my shelf space for games. Sold the deck. Uh, I've got one of these, an Ambernick. This thing's really cool. Love the way it feels. Um, just want to tell you, if you want to grab this, I swapped out the thumbstick and it no longer has the issue of cardinal direction snapping. You may have to change the dead zone in some games because the one I have is a little bit more sensitive than the one that came in there. But yeah, anyway, that's enough. See you in the comments. Memory lane, let's look at my old Windows things here. I've still got them. This is the original ones I used to use to install everything back in the day. Now this was made as a copy of Windows 98 that I actually have. There it is. Let's uh, let's just do it over here. Why not? What the? What the? F what the? What the? F Wake up, stupid! Oh, what a pain in the ass. There we go. Uh, yeah, there's my this is my Windows 98 disc right there. What does yours look like? I got a Fuji film. Oh wait, wait. Here's my Windows 98 stuff. Thought I had a, a official retail thing in here, but I guess not. So I got this Windows 98 stuff. And then I had this. This was actually one of my favorite operating systems right here. Windows 2000, There's XP, Service Pack 3. So I guess I don't have my retail keys in this book. I, I mean, my retail copies in this book. I thought I did, but last bit of show and tell. <laughs> Look at that CD. All right, enough.